Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. We have a hot topic. It's come from our Facebook group called the Binder Strategy. Some of you right now are going, what the heck is that? We will answer that first. And then second, we will walk through a theoretical binder strategy. Again, if you don't know what it is, you have my course. It is in the bonus section. If you don't have the course, you'll know that one of the bonus sections is self-management and binder strategy. Let's turn to the creator of the binder strategy, Dion. Tell us what it is how you use it. And then we'll welcome that other guy, Matt, in a minute. <laughs> I was just begging that he wasn't going to pass it to me. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's the author of the thing on the channel. He wants me to talk. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the binder strategy came because I'm really lazy and I want to be able to buy deals from the MLS that cash flow. And if you look at deals on the MLS, the current rents usually don't cash flow. And I've heard a lot of investors say, you have to use the current rents. Don't project, don't estimate, don't guesstimate. But if you have a strategy that gets the tenants to request a rent increase that so far has worked every time, you can run the numbers with confidence, knowing that you'll get the rents to just below the area average. So I don't use the area average when I'm running because that you might not get that. But just below the area average so far, it's what I've gotten every time. So use it for example, area average 1800, you might get 17, 1650, like a for example. Uh, so real, real numbers, uh, purchase to duplex, the uh, tenants were at eight and 900, uh, area average rents were 14 and 1450. Oh, wow. Tenants went to 1350. Okay. From eight and 900 without batting an eye at their request. So no so, turnover, nothing. No turnover, no rehab. <laughs> Lazy. Lazy. <laughs> right? Don't have to advertise, screen a tenant, place a tenant anything. Um, and, the, and I think the reason we brought the binder strategy up today is because most people that are watching the channel are familiar with the binder strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping that we're getting that information out there. Right. Um, but the question came up in the Facebook group of what do you do when the tenant comes back with a number that's not high enough? And I, I forget the ex actual numbers, but we'll just go hypotheticals, nice round numbers. Sure. If the tenants at a thousand mm -hmm. and the area average rents are 1800 mm -hmm. and they came back at 1200, Right. It would not make financial sense to keep that tenant in the property. You're losing $600 a month mm -hmm. to what you could get because the tenants know the smartest thing you can do as an owner would be to say, I'm not renewing your lease. You need to move out. I'm going to do a rehab, spend five to $10,000, and then I'm going to get area average rents, but I'm lazy and I don't want to disrupt the tenant's lives. Yeah. So, well, let me, let me actually push back on that. I actually think a lot of investors believe exactly what you just said. I would tell you that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is maximize your rents without a turnover. And That's that the whole will purpose mean, of this. Yeah. And that will mean likely getting lower rents. If in your example, a thousand and eighteen hundred, if you could get them to fifteen or sixteen hundred, sure, you're under market, but you just saved five grand. How many months does an extra two hundred dollars before you it's four years? Right. Plus the month and the time for the rehab that you weren't collecting rent where you were still making a payment. Yeah. Right. So, so if a, if a tenant does come back with a number that's low and this has happened because that's the great thanks for making this video is because you don't present the binder. And then the question that we ask is, what do you think could be fair? And they give you an answer and you say, okay, great. That's it. We accept it. We're done. Yeah. That's, that's a conversation. They give you a number back and almost every time that's the number I go with. I, I wanted my last tenants to, if, the, if you're watching, this is not you. <laughs> Not 12 50 you. I would have been fine with with this one increase and they went to 1460 and I thought I accept your offer there you go Shocking. okay but had they gone 1300 1100 I would yeah. have said here's the area average this is how far you are from that yeah what do you think makes sense for me because I asked you what was fair not what do you want to pay right if you can't afford an increase I totally understand I'll give you a good reference on wherever you move to yeah we'll give you 90 days to get out that so far has never happened but it could you realize that but, is an but it option. could that's that's that is an option the option yeah. is if we can't make this make sense not renewing the lease is the way we would go yeah and then matt you you've obviously heard dion talk about the binder strategy probably almost a year now have you actually executed something similar here in the last six to nine months yep lumberjackified but yes. lumberjackified you just slapped the number in their face and said this is what you're paying i think yeah. matt's been doing a version of it longer than oh. when he's heard about it he has a version of it himself Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we've always, <clears throat> for people that we've always had where we've seen market rents moving, <clears throat> we've always had the conversation with them and just okay. said, hey, listen, 
if you want, you can go do the work. I'll do this much work for you, mm -hmm. which is here's what the other market rents are and stuff that compares to yours. That's, that's what we would like to be like to be getting for the unit. Let me know what you think is reasonable. Yeah. If they and, come back, go okay, ahead. No, go ahead. Please. If they, and so this is, this is literally just something we'll do on text. Mm -hmm. And then, if, and then it's a couple texts back and forth because a lot of people can't, they, they take it um, defensively. If you're sure. talking on the phone with them and people are just, you know, anti, anti, you know, um, confrontation, confrontation. Yeah. So we'll go back and forth a few times and then they've come back and they've said, well, yeah, I'd like to pay this. In this example, it was the guy was paying 660. He was willing to pay 725, but the other side of the house was renting for 1200. Ooh. And it's like at the end of the day, you know, so I would just have a very real conversation with them and say, in fact, we had one where I bought the property two years ago. I didn't do a raise through COVID. I went back and I said, <clears throat> it was a, it was a three bed, uh, a four bed, two bath house. They were paying 1650 okay. market for that is just under 3000. Mm. And so I said to them, I said, I need to raise the rent and let me know what you guys are thinking. And she came back, she goes, we're just not willing, yeah. willing to pay another dollar. And I said, I really appreciate that. You guys have 60 days. Yeah. I said, I'll give you 60 instead of 30, but I'll give you 60 days to vamoose. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, it makes sense. I'm sure wherever they moved to, they were happy, but yeah. I couldn't, the way that I also do it on my side is this is a business. Mm -hmm. And more importantly is there is somebody else out there that wants that and needs that house. Oh, it's not sure. sitting vacant because I'm an idiot and I'm saying three grand's the number. So when it's all said and done, I think we actually, when we showed it to a few people, we actually got 32. Hmm. The rent doubled on yeah. a single family house over what they were paying. It doubled. And so I just, you know, I look at, and I'm not going to obviously say who it was in the, in the fa Facebook group, because I think it's really important that what I want people to do is identify for themselves. He said, I'm willing to live with 900 bucks a month instead of 1200. All I want you to do is if you're willing to do that, just calculate in your mind that you're paying them in that particular case, $3,600 a year to stay. Yeah. 300 That's bucks all a I'm month. saying. So yeah. what are they doing? Something else? Are they doing the lawn? Are they doing the gardening? Are they doing the, you know, the plowing, whatever. you know, whatever, whatever, because it's not just a zero sum game, highest and best wins. That's yeah. not what this is. It's just like buying a house. Highest and best does not always win. Yeah. Well, the last thing I'll say on this strategy is your tenants talk. Of course. Yeah. yeah. If you, uh, if you push somebody to 12 and the next door neighbor, same configuration, same units at 900, you know how soon that 1200 is going to feel stupid. Yep. About seven minutes. And it goes the other way too. I had a duplex where the one that went to 1460, I waited a month to do the binder strategy on the other side. Yeah. And guess what number they threw at me when I got there? 1250 would be great. What did they tell me? 1460 because they talk. That's of what course. the owner accepted. And they were, <clears throat> so it was a very easy second binder strategy. Yeah. The thing that I really like about this is, especially in the Facebook groups, I don't want to use the word heartless. No. I think it's inexperienced. That's yeah. where this comes from. Yeah. So many people who talk about real estate, and it seems like they probably have never owned a rental. They say things like, it's your property. You set the rent. Mm. And I'm like, enjoy the turnover. Yeah. <laughs> That's not how this works. You can set the rents. Yeah. But. yeah. That is one way to do it. it. Generally speaking, doesn't end well when you do your financial statement at the end of the year. If I went to the tenant and said, super nice. Hey, I would really like to raise your rent $310. I'm a jerk. Oh, absolutely. But if I present the strategy of this is what you would be paying somewhere else. This is what you're paying now. Here's what I paid for the property. Your rent made sense for the person who bought it 10 years ago for half what I did, but this is what I paid. And then they go, well, I don't want to pay $450 more. Can we do 310? Yeah. They're asking for it and I'm not a jerk. Yes. And I got the exact same result exactly. as if I walked in the door and said, here's what I want. Yeah. So again, folks, the binder strategy works. Um, it is a binder, right? We go through a lot of this in the course. There is a whole bonus section around self-management, binder strategy, making sure you're getting the rents. It is not a heartless exercise. I get nervous when people think the answer lives in Excel. This is people, people's lives families, kids in school, moving, it sucks. Mm -hmm. So don't be that person. Uh, again, do the work. So let's go to Matt first. How can they find you, Matt? Lumberjack Lander on YouTube. And tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Lumberjack live stream eight o'clock. 
bring the foot dragger that's in your relationship to the to the table. Yeah, eight o'clock Eastern. Answer their questions. Eight o'clock Eastern time. Yes. Yep. And Dion. Right here on YouTube, Dion Talk Financial Freedom, and I will be in Matt the Lumberjack Landlord's live stream tonight because I think Ashley has some great things to say. Oh she yeah. Does. Yeah. yeah, and just keep asking questions. See how long you can make them go. <laughs> and I will be asking some ongoing. She'll walk. Questions. She'll so walk. She'll be like, "I'm going to bed. Just I'm out. Here. I'm here for days. I don't care. I'm going to bed." All right, guys. Thanks again. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Mm-hmm.